Hey guys, it's Mia. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, in today's video, I am going to be doing a video that I've wanted to do for so long, but I've just never got around to doing it. In today's video, I am going to be doing the ultimate guide to boarding school. <laughs> it's starting to get to that time of year where people are deciding whether or not they want to go to boarding school and take that leap. So I thought I would help you guys out and give you some advice, some things to look out for and just a general guide to boarding school. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. I've got a list here on my phone to make sure that I don't leave anything out. So to start off with, I'm going to be talking about preparation for going to school. The first time that I actually physically moved to boarding school, I made so many mistakes that I would not make again. The first thing is to pack a few days before you leave. I know this is probably common sense, but when it comes to packing, you keep on leaving it thinking, oh, it's fine. I've still got time suddenly you don't have time and you've got nothing packed I'm not going to lie I'm still guilty of doing this to this day I still pack like the day before I meant to go and then panic but packing before big must do to make sure you're organized got everything you need yeah definitely recommend doing that Alongside with packing, don't overpack. This is something else I did when I first went to boarding school. I feel like when you first go, it's really hard to kind of know what you'll need and what you won't need. One of the things I packed way too many of were jumpers. I literally wore like the same two jumpers on repeat and then the rest just took up so much space that I could have used for something else. So don't overpack. There's a lot of things that you'll literally never use that you think you'll use and just sit in your cupboards. If you do overpack, something that I do is I take things back that I don't use um, during the holidays. So like for half term this time, I had a few things that I didn't wear, so I took them from school back here to empty out my room a little bit. So you can do that as well if you have overpacked, but I'd recommend you don't. And to go alongside packing, my number one advice is to bring lots of photos and fairy lights. The rooms at school are typically very bland, um, you know, lots of wood and everything. Bringing lots of photos and fairy lights really does transform your room to make it feel nice and homely. Especially if you're missing home, having all those pictures can be really nice. Just to remind you of family and stuff, and I think it just makes your room so much more personal. You can look at my room tour, I'll leave it in the description. I have loads of pictures and stuff in that video. Next, take two of everything. This may sound really, really stupid, but it's my best advice. When I first went to school, I took one toothbrush, one toothpaste, one deodorant, one shampoo, etc. Sometimes, if you have something that runs out in the middle of the week, you can't go to the shops to get it until the weekend, and then you have no toothpaste. Or in some cases, I have lost my toothbrush at school. I don't know how it happened, but I have lost it. So having a spare one is an essential. Another top tip is to bring an extension lead. This has honestly saved me because we used to have like two plugs in our room and they were so far away from our beds. Luckily now we have so many, but it's so useful to have an extension lead if you don't have one. Label all of your clothing. This is like the biggest one. Whenever you put your clothing into the wash, um, obviously it has to be named, otherwise you'll never see it again. This has happened to me a few times. And just a top tip guys, make friends with your matron and your house parents because they are the people who determine how good your time at boarding school will be you want them to be on your side so make sure that you're nice to your matron and to your house parents get them on your side and then your life will be so much easier next is a really important topic which is food i feel like food was probably the thing i was most shocked by now obviously every school will be different some schools food will be better than others for me personally it's not great um, obviously you're having three meals a day, seven days a week, most of the time, and it gets a bit boring. They make the same food, it's typically not great. So, bring lots of snacks and bring some ready-made meals, or like pot noodles or something, to keep you going. Quite a lot of the time after dinner, I'll go and make myself my own food because I didn't eat at dinner. It happens. But yeah, bringing lots of snacks, crisps, biscuits, you know, all the unhealthy stuff that you probably shouldn't be eating, get that in your room. <laughs> and on with food, when you bring in food, do be prepared for people to take it. I have fallen victim to my friends taking my food <laughs> and I definitely overreacted about it so many times. It's really not that deep when people take your food, but to me it feels like the end of the world. But I've learned over time <laughs> that when people take your food, it's not that deep. Do not start an argument over it like I have in the past. <laughs> Moving on to rules, again, these can differ depending on what school you're going to, where you're going. But I feel like quite a few boarding schools have these rules that I've written down. First of all, until fourth form, which is year 10, we weren't allowed to have our phones after 10 o'clock at night. So they would come around and they would take our phones off us and the Wi-Fi also goes off so you can't even use your laptop. And they did that every single night for the whole year. It is so annoying. It honestly is so annoying. We didn't have an alarm to wake us up because none of us owned an alarm clock. We couldn't obviously text our parents after 10 o'clock, we couldn't watch anything, 
it was the worst time ever but this is something to be prepared for because I know a lot of schools do have this rule and some of them are even older than year 10. Some of them go up to like year 12. So prepare yourself for that, check the rules before you go in. Next is prep time. So I have quite a lot of you guys asking on my videos whenever I'm talking about prep, what do I mean exactly? So I think most boarding schools, especially in the UK, definitely have prep time. Prep time is basically a time when you have to be in your room doing homework, which is called prep. As I've got older, prep time has kind of become a little bit more relaxed. Basically, I sit and watch movies in my room. <laughs> but prep time, you basically have to be in your rooms, quiet, you're not allowed into the kitchens, you're not allowed outside or anything like that. It is honestly quite a good time to get work done if you've got a lot of work to do. And during GCSEs, it was great because everyone was quiet in the corridors. But it can be quite tedious if you have nothing to do and no work to do and it's like right before summer. Um, also, you're not allowed to shower during prep. That's like the biggest rule in boarding school. I don't know why they don't let you shower during prep. My prep, personally, is an hour and a half it's so long some schools are longer some schools are shorter but be prepared for prep time <laughs> what do you expect when going to school firstly you may expect to have a roommate i didn't know i was going to have a roommate when i first joined school until the day before luckily i ended up having a roommate who i loved mia um, we had a great time but do expect to have a roommate because it is a big shock if it's something you're not expecting and you walk into a room and there's this person there who you don't know <laughs> some other cases though like this year i got to choose who i wanted to be my roommate so obviously my roommate is izzy so i knew that we were roommates going in so that made it a little bit easier but sometimes you won't sometimes you will um, and that leads on to you have to get used to sharing with a lot of different people in our boarding house we have an odd 40 to 50 girls in one building and it can get very stressful because there's so many people there's lots of different arguments floating around hormones everywhere but you do just have to get used to living with people things will be messy showers will be disgusting it's just you have to adapt to it seeing people in the corridors not really having time alone you do get used to it really quickly i remember i really really struggled with this when i first went to school um, but now it's just like the normal and you like seeing people around surprisingly This is something that hit me like a brick when I went to school And that's if, if you're ill you cannot stay in your room But basically at boarding school we have this thing called the SAM Which is like the medical centre and you go there if you're ill For us we have to stay there throughout the whole school day And then we get to go back to our rooms at like 5.30 But for some schools you have to stay overnight in the SAM I'm so glad we don't have to do that because I literally hate the SAM so much But yeah, if you're ill you do not get to stay in your room. It's the worst thing ever. Next thing to prepare for are late nights. There will be so many nights when you're kept awake. And this is just the reality. During my first year at school, I think my average bedtime was around three in the morning. And then during my GCSE years, it went down to about nine o'clock at night. And then now it's at about 11 o'clock. Typically, you're just kept awake by other people in the corridors. Sometimes if your roommate's still awake and you're wanting to go to sleep, although I've never really had that problem. There's just a lot of different things that determine when you go to bed. Arguments. These are definitely the biggest thing to prepare for. I can't speak for boys' boarding houses, but I know for a fact that girls' boarding houses have so many arguments. I have had quite a few arguments at school. When you're living with your friends, you do get under each other's skin a lot, and there will be times when you disagree and take it out on each other. It is really hard when you literally just can't escape that person because you live with them and you see them everywhere. But my biggest advice is just to get over it. Like, be the bigger person and solve the situation. It's not worth arguing with people you live with. It just makes boarding so boring and really not a fun place to me. So guys, that is all of my wisdom and knowledge that I'm going to be giving you in today's video. I might end up making a part two if you guys want to see it, so comment down below if you do. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching, and remember, if any of you are going to boarding school this year and you need to ask any questions, feel free to DM me over on Instagram. I try my best to answer all of them in case there's anything that you're wondering about. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoy this video, and I will see you again very, very soon for another one. Bye!